Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to generate a sheet in Revit using sorting and grouping, and then also using the parameter uh, tool within families to calculate certain qualities of a element that's in our uh, schedule. So let's get right into it. So I'm gonna go and uh, look at my sheet here real quick, and I want you to see that one of the things that I'm calculating on my spreadsheet here are the amount of seats that are within my building and then the number of seats associated with that uh, count. So essentially there's a difference between the two because for example, the uh, computer lab component, let's say, or there's like a, uh, a set of lounge area chairs, um, even though there's only a count of four of those objects, there's actually 20 seats associated with it. So we're gonna learn how to do that here. So I'm gonna go into my floor plan, Revit uh, floor plan here, and I'm gonna go and double click in just because I'm accessing it through my sheets. And I'm gonna scroll in, and if I click on this object here, we see that it's a conference chair, and we're gonna assume that you know one seat should be associated with it. So typically we could run a schedule to just count for it, but what I can do is go in and edit the family, and when I go to edit this family, I can go up to, um, the folder right here and just make sure that I understand which uh, category it's associated with for when I run my schedule. And so here I see it's a furniture uh, item and that's okay. Uh, sometimes though, you'll see furniture, if you import it from Revit City or something like that, it'll come in as a furniture system and you'll wanna just account for what that uh, that is. And then I'm gonna go into the manage tab. So I'm gonna go down to manage here and I'm gonna click on shared parameters. We're gonna create a new shared parameter. And essentially what I've done is I've created one for all the books within this library that I'm designing and also the number of seats. And so to create a new parameter, you just go and click on new. And we're gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna name this one demo. The discipline, um, right now I have mine set as common because I'm just kind of counting uh, these items and associating then a integer with it. You could also choose number. I find integer to be uh, the one that I tend to go with. And so I choose integer, and then we're gonna say okay. And now that I'm here in demo, I can just say okay. And we're gonna go and associate this parameter now with it. So we're gonna to go to create, and we're gonna go on the family types tool. And in the family types tool, what we wanna do is click on the star icon here with the paper for a new parameter. And that new parameter, we're gonna say, hey, let's do a shared parameter. We're gonna select the one that we just made. So I'm gonna scroll down we're gonna find demo, here we go. And with demo selected, type an instance. I haven't really uh, dove into it enough to tell you the difference between the two, but I can tell you that my schedules have worked with either one, so I've tested out either one. I'm just gonna make it a type parameter. I think instance, you might be able to change it per item, uh, but type might be more associated with the family. That's my assumption there. So I'm gonna click on type, I'm gonna say okay. <clears throat> and now we can associate a number with this. So I could associate let's say three, but honestly, in this case, this one deserves just a one here. I'm gonna say apply and okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I uh, close out of this. I need to save this as a new uh, file. And so if I wanna save and override this one, I can. Um, and then I can say load in the project and close. So I'm gonna go load in the project and close. Do I wanna override this? Yeah, I don't mind if I have a property demo associated with this. I'm just gonna say, yeah, that's okay. And then, yeah, we can replace it. And going into our uh, file, now we can say override the existing version. And now when I run a schedule, I could search under the type parameter of demo and I can count then totals for all the ones that are associated with one. Now real quick, let's just see how that applies then to uh, a couch. So I'm gonna go over to my floor plan level two and here I have some lounge seating. So I'm gonna double click in and I'm gonna get on that lounge seating uh, category. I'm gonna go to edit the family and now we've already made our shared parameter, so we should just need to go into the family types. Once again though, we're gonna just check the category and make sure that it says furniture, so when we run our schedule, it's all lumped together in the same schedule. And then we're gonna go and click on the family types, and we're gonna say new, and we should already have that shared parameter to pick from called demo, so here it is, and say okay. And once again, we're gonna make it a type, say okay. And then here, the number of uh, actual seats I have is one, two, three, four, five. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna associate five, right, with that number of seats and say apply and okay. Then we can go and uh, save this. 
So we'll just save it over the family file, wherever it's saved on our computer. And then we say load into project and close. And then we're going to say override the existing version. Then when you go to create your schedule, let's go and look at that real quick. So I'm going to go over to schedules, right click, new schedules and quantities. From there, we're going to go down to a family schedule. So we're going to scroll down. And, I'm sorry, a furniture schedule. <laughs> and then we're going to go and uh, we can name this demo count and here we have you know, number of seats number number burner number of seats and then we say okay and from here we can go and associate um, a lot of different parameters that exist here so we can have the count we could also do the uh, family and type so we can help filter that and we're going to move that up and let's go then we have to find the demo uh, one and it's obviously it's alphabetical here so there we go throw that over and we're gonna move that down and i think that's all i really want i could associate it by level if i wanted to as well um, but i think this is okay so now we're going to go into filter and let's filter all of the family groups that have demo associated with it otherwise we get a really long list and if the parameter exists we're going to keep it in our sheet then under sorting and grouping, we can sort by family and type. And then we can uncheck itemize every instance. And we could take a grand total of that if we would like. Forting, uh, formatting, we have, let's see, family and type. Uh, that's all good with the count. Sometimes it's nice if it's uh, in the center. And let's see we uh, could calculate the total of our accounts we understand how many we have uh, total in our project um, although we, we don't necessarily need that but this one is huge this one uh, the heading demo we could also just say it's like number of seats you can make it say whatever you want and then we want to uh, calculate totals on that for sure and then let's go to appearance and this is where you can customize you know different uh, text styles so I'm going to choose like quarter inch century gothic and then I'm going to choose eighth inch and then here I'm going to choose uh, three thirty second that's about as small as you want to go on text size and you can mess with different settings up here too if you'd like and say okay and now this creates a, a nice clean um, schedule here that we could drag into um, our actual schedule so here I'm going to just drag that in real quick and so I'm going to go down to um, our demo count I'm just going to drag that in and here you see that you know I've changed the appearance on this so if I want to go and edit this schedule I can double click on it and then under appearance I can click edit and we can make this match my other one and say okay and then we can go back to our schedules and here <clears throat> I want to drag this out a little bit so that way it becomes a little cleaner. And I'm just gonna put this off to the side right now. And we can see that we have uh, 88 items out of these two families. And um, I have 104 proposed seats out of those families. Now in this library, I have a special instance. I'm gonna show you kind of a little uh, a hack as well. So I have these, um, these bleacher seats that I made out of stairs. Okay, and it's really difficult to be able to associate a seating parameter with that. So what I can do is on these bleacher seats is I can trick Revit into counting it towards the number of seats in my schedule. In order to do that, what I want to do here is go under the architecture tab and say um, model in place. And with model in place, we're going to make it a furniture item and say okay. And then here I'm just going to call it demo uh, seating. And here what I can do is I can make a reference line and I can pick a line and we can just throw it right on top of here. Actually, I'm going to throw it on a, a different one because I have one there too. So I'm going to throw it right here and then I'm going to um, say finish model. Um, oh, but before I say finish model, sorry, I'm going to go to family and types parameters. And we're going to make a parameter on this family and we're going to if you, uh, you can probably guess what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select the demo. And so now we've made this like kind of hidden family that's associated with uh, our steps. And I'm going to say OK. Now I could go and create multiple ones of these. 
um, but I'm going to kind of do a shortcut here and I know that my bleacher seating can hold about 100 people and that's all of my bleacher seating combined in the um, in the project so I'm just going to say OK on that and then finish model and then if we look at our schedule now we can see that um, we have our demo seating which we could change how that reads on the schedule uh, has uh, you know, there's one set, let's say, of bleacher seats, and that um, you know, can sit about 100 people. So now my, my seating in the schedule shows that I have 204. All right, don't forget to save and subscribe. If you like the video, uh, it encourages me to make more like this one, and I hope to see you all next time.